So hello students, and now welcome to my channel. Again, my name is Mr. Meshak Ngige and welcome to Imat with Meshak Ngige. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, share or, uh, or uh, shared or even commented, kindly do so as we help to grow this particular channel. Now, uh, we go to now the March 2024 series. And again, if you're interested with our online lessons, kindly, you can always reach out as we learn together. Now, let's check our second question. So, given the function u, uh, which is a function of, of exponent and trigonometric function 2i, sine of 2i, first part, show that u is harmonic. Then the second part, you determine the conjugate, that is v, x, y, such that the function, uh, the whole function in terms of u and vj is, is analytic. So, solution. <coughs> so, again, so we have our function u, uh, I'll just name it to be u. Remember, it is just in terms of x and y. So our function u, x, y, is given by e to x sine of 2y. So for a function to be abonic, you have to get what? You have to get d squared u, dx squared, plus d squared u, dy squared, and you prove that when you add these two, the answer is what? The answer is zero, right together. So now let's get the derivative with respect to x and with respect to y twice. So du <coughs> dx, remember it is partial derivatives. So differentiate this function with respect to x. So it's only this function. So drop what? Drop 2 exponent 2x, two then you get what? Sine of 2y. Then differentiate it twice again with respect to what? With respect to x. <coughs> again, it is only this part. So drop 2 again, you get what? 4 exponent of 2x. Then sine of what? Sine of 2, 2y. Two right together. Then you come to with respect to the respect to the respect to y. Then you come to du dy. So again, differentiate this function with respect to y. When you differentiate sine, you get cos, which is positive. All together. But you remove the, the constant. So you shall have 2 exponent of 2x. Then this one becomes what? Cosine of 2, 2y. Two then differentiate the second time with respect to y. So when you differentiate cos, you get negative sine. Now we together. But you remove the 2. So 2 times 2 gives you 4. But remember, you're supposed to have what? A negative. So negative 4 exponent 2x. Your cos becomes what? Sine of, sine of 2, sine of 2y. So therefore, we are supposed to prove that when you take the second derivative with respect to x and when you add second derivative with respect to y, the answer gives you what? The answer gives you zero. And you can see at this point, your second derivative with respect to x is that, your second derivative with respect to y is that, and you can see this function and this function is the same, but one is a negative of the other. So when you add the two of them, it is just the same as subtraction. Now we can see that four, Exponent 2x sine of 2y plus minus gives you minus 4 exponent 2y sine of 2 uh, so 2x sine of 2y. That one gives you what? It gives you 0. So therefore we say your u function is what? Your u function is harmonic. Are we together? <coughs> so that is the first part. Now we come to the second part of getting the nx function, uh, that is uh, the other part, the imaginary part of the function that makes the function to be what? The function to be analytic, all together. Now, so we know the keyword here should be what? Analytic, all together. I think you've seen this in, in, the, in the previous example. So we are checking what it takes for a function to be analytic. And remember, the question can also be asked, you find view v, in terms of x and y, such that the whole function is analytic, uh, is uh, now or the whole function satisfies the Cauchy uh, Riemann's equation. So, Cauchy Riemann's equations are the two equations that uh, makes a function to be analytic. So, it's one and the same thing. Yeah? And those two equations are when you take the derivative with the, uh, of u with respect to x, it should be the same as dv dy, that is the first, and dv dx to be the same as negative du d what d dy so these two functions or these two equations prove that indeed a function is what a function is analytic now so we say use the first part here use the first part 
Yes, this first part is the, is the one that starts you off. Now, du dx should be the same as dv dy. So what is your du dx? du dx is this function. So therefore, what is our dv dy? dv dy will still also be the same function because du dx is the same as dv dy. So therefore, that is the starting point. So our dv dy will be given by this part, which is 2 exponent 2x, then you have sine of 2, 2y. Two right together. Yes. Now, this one is a derivative. So we go back to the original function of v. So if this one is a de de uh, uh, differentiated function, for you to go back to v, what do you do? Integrate. So integrate here, integrate here with respect to what? With respect to y. So integrating the part that has a y, which is a sine, and when you integrate sine, what do you get? You integrate sine, you get negative cos. Are we together? So it will be negative 2 exponent 2x, two then cos of 2y, but you divide by what? You divide by, you divide by 2. Are we together? Then plus, we say, you add a constant, a uh, constant, sorry, of integration. So you can put it in terms of A, in terms of C. Any letter really uh, doesn't have an issue. You can have it as AX, as CX. So for instance, you can use A here. Or uh, let's just use C, because you have used it in the previous uh, example. So you can use it as C, <coughs> as CX. So this one is a constant of integration all together. So again, this value and this value can cancel so that you have negative 2x cosine of 2y plus cx. Now this is your v, uh, it's your v, all right together. So now we shall need to determine this so, so that we can have our v in terms of x and y, all right together. So this is just the, the integral with respect to y. Uh, the part but the function remember it is in terms of what in terms of x and in terms of x and uh, x and y um, yeah now so we have v so this first part here gets us up to this point right together up to the point where you get your v uh, the v function all right now <clears throat> You come to the second part, which is this. So, you get that function. So now, you compare dv dx with du d, dv, du dy. So the question is, do you have dv dx? No, but you can compare it with du dy. But you have our du d, du dy is already here. So if we have v, if we have a function v, then you can get dv, then dx. Differentiate the function with respect to what? With respect to x. All right, together. So dv dx, so we have it as, uh, as that. So what do we have? So differentiate. Remember we're differentiating the function, eh? So you drop 2, so it will be negative 2 exponent 2x. This one remains to be cosine of 2y. Then plus write this uh, as a derivative of the function all right together because you're differentiating but this one is a constant and remember we are assuming it has an x so you just write it as a derivative because if you differentiate a constant you get zero but since it has an x and you're differentiating with respect to x then you shall just write it as c prime x okay to show that this one has been differentiated so now we have our dv dx. So we shall compare dv dx with du dy. All right, together. So we are saying that dv dx, which is this, which is now the function that we have here, negative 2 exponent 2x cosine of 2y plus c prime x should be the same as negative of du dy. Negative. Remember, it is negative du dy, and our du dy is this function. So negative 2 exponent 2x, then cosine of 2 of 2y. Now together, so if you open this bracket, you get negative 2 exponent 2x, cosine of 
2i plus c prime x equals to negative 2 exponent 2x cosine of 2y right, together so we can see that this part of the function is the same as this part of the function so what is our c prime x c prime x what value do we have addition uh, to this it is what zero there is no value zero so therefore your cx in itself will also be still zero because remember we're supposed to integrate this function for us to get the cx but since the value is zero therefore your cx is also is also zero so therefore your v xy will just be given by so our v now is this the whole of this function so it is negative e uh, 2x then cos 2y then plus zero so it will just be given by that because our cx is what our cx is zero and that is the function so the function of v in terms of x and y <coughs> which is a function of x and y and actually i believe here should also be x and y because we have our next variable here so you can just have it that way it is supposed to be v uh, x and y but remember the part that we're interested with after writing this function is the c cx so we always need to get the cx so this one should be in terms of v x and y this one means when you have a function and you're given uh, variables here it means that the variables that are here are the ones that are on this side and you can see we have an x and we have a y so we have that so the the other part that remains always is only in finding the what in finding the the cx and that is your function v in terms of x and y and you get yourself how many marks 10 marks now let's check the last question that should be from uh, november 2023